Hey guys, it's Ms. Sheehan, and today I'm going to do a lecture on Watergate and uh, the scandal around President Richard Nixon. Uh, so I'd like you to take notes on this, um, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So, Watergate is the name of a major scandal that resulted in Nixon resigning the presidency, and he is the only president in history to do so, to actually step down from being president. Um, and it is one of the biggest scandals and instances of widespread corruption in American history. And it unfolded over about four years. Um, and there were lots and lots of different parts and aspects of it. So today I'm just going to hit kind of the highlights so you have an idea of what it is, because it is important to know about. Okay. So 1969, right after Nixon is elected, he approves wiretaps on government and reporters' phones to find the source of leaks of information about the Vietnam War. So he starts off with wiretapping reporters and other people in the government's phones, which is illegal, right? Um, he does not have the power to do that. Um, but he starts off with that. So 1972 is when the scandal really breaks. So some members of uh, CREEP, which is the hilariously named Committee to Reelect the President, which was Nixon's committee to, you know, um, run his reelection campaign. Uh, so some members of that committee break into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, D.C. And that's the, this is the Watergate Hotel here. Uh, and they were there to steal information about the upcoming presidential elections. However, they are caught. Uh, the White House claims that this was a CIA operation and they block the FBI's attempt to investigate the crime. Basically, they say, A, we didn't have any knowledge of this, B, it was a CIA, and C, it's a matter of national security, so you don't need to investigate it, right? Which is, a lie. Um, and then other Nixon officials destroy documents and give a false testimony to try and cover up what the break-in was actually about, both of which are also crimes as well. Okay, so 1973, the next year, uh, the heads of CREEP, the Committee to Re-elect a President, admit actually to lying under oath, which is called perjury, at the trial of the Watergate burglars. So there was a trial, um, and then later the heads of CREEP say, well, we lied, right? And they eventually give up information that implicates the former Attorney General of the United States and other Nixon officials in the break-in. So basically they say it wasn't just these guys, it was a whole bunch of people within the Nixon, Nixon administration who knew about and organized this uh, break-in. Okay, in May 1973, the Senate opened an investigation that discovered widespread surveillance, political espionage, and corruption among the Nixon administration. So it wasn't just limited to creep, it was across like pretty much everyone in the Nixon administration. And what they discover is that it turns out that Nixon had been recording conversations in the White House and in the Oval Office as early as 1971. So not only had he been wiretapping people, he had also been recording people without their knowledge um, within both the White House and the Oval Office. Um, by October of 1973, this is becoming a bigger and bigger scandal, and Nixon really doesn't want this investigated. So in October of 1973, he orders the Attorney General to fire the Senate's prosecutor in charge of the investigation. And actually, that is obstruction of justice, right? The Senate is in charge of the investigation, not the president, right? And those are two separate branches of government that are supposed to be, right, separate from each other. Um, but Nixon is basically saying, hey, Attorney General, who serves at the pleasure of the president, you have to fire this lawyer who's working for the Senate. 
the attorney general refuses to do this. Um, so Nixon actually fires the attorney general and the prosecutor himself and the attorney general's entire office. And this is known as the Saturday Night Massacre. And this was basically Nixon's attempt to get the Senate's investigation stopped uh, before they really discovered the uh, widespread aspects of his crime. And that's a really big deal. This was kind of the indication that Nixon himself was involved in this and not just members of administration and that it was way really serious. And this Saturday Night Massacre, this firing of the Attorney General and the prosecutor, leads to uh, the House of Representatives beginning an impeachment investigation. Uh, so basically, the House of Representatives starts impeachment proceedings. Okay, in 1974, the new Senate prosecutor um, subpoenas Nixon's tapes of conversations in the Oval Office. And subpoena is basically uh, saying, you must turn over this evidence of a crime to us, right? It's a legal thing. You can be put in jail if you do not follow a subpoena, whether that's coming to talk to a court or turning over evidence, right? So the new prosecutor for the Senate investigation subpoena these tapes that Nixon had been recording conversations of. Nixon refuses to follow the subpoena, but he basically says, instead, I'll release some transcripts of the tapes, some typed up, you know, transcripts instead of the actual tapes. You can just see what was being said. However, it becomes very clear that the transcripts are obviously both edited and inaccurate, including missing just big chunks of conversations. And there's one in particular where there's a whole big chunk of a conversation missing, and that's called the smoking gun, where like from the context, you can understand that Nixon and the person he is talking to are talking about the Watergate break-in, but that, stuff, that part is taken out. So at this point, the Senate goes, he knew about it. So Nixon continues to refuse to release the original tapes themselves, and the case goes to the Supreme Court. And this ends up in the case called United States versus Nixon. So Nixon claims two things that are kind of unprecedented. So one, he claims that the judicial branch does not have jurisdiction over the executive branch. And that entirely goes against the Constitution's ideas and theory of checks and balances, right? Each branch is supposed to have a check or a balance over the other branches. And Nixon is basically going, is saying that no, the executive branch can do whatever they want without being stopped by the judicial branch, by the court system. And then the second thing that he claims is what he calls his executive privilege. And that basically, uh, what he says that is, is that the president gets to decide if the laws apply to him, which also goes against the Constitution, right? The Constitution that says everyone must be treated equally under the law. That is the 14th Amendment, right? And that includes the president. The president is a citizen of the United States. That means he must be treated equally under the law. He does not get special privilege just because he is president. Um, but Nixon claims that he does. However, court shuts him down entirely. They unanimously reject Nixon's argument and say, you have to release the unedited tapes. You have to follow the subpoena like anyone else would have to. And he releases the unedited tapes, and the tapes show that Nixon had personal knowledge of the Watergate break-in, as well as many other instances of political espionage. So uh, this whole Watergate scandal of wiretapping government and reporters, of spying on people, of breaking in, um, of recording conversations, Nixon was personally directing it. It was not limited to just the people under him. He was doing it himself right? Committing all these crimes. So it becomes very clear that Nixon was personally responsible for these crimes. So on August 8th, 1974, he resigns from the presidency before he can be impeached and removed from office. And it was very clear that not only was the House and Senate going to impeach him, but they were going to remove him from office. Because remember, impeachment is a two-part process. You can be impeached, but then it's a separate thing to be removed from office. Um, and like at this point, it was clear that he had committed the crimes. It was clear that he had knowledge of all these crimes, and he was going to be removed. So he steps down from office. 
So his vice president, Gerald Ford, then becomes president. And Gerald Ford immediately pardons Nixon of all these crimes so that he cannot be prosecuted uh, for any of the Watergate crimes. So essentially, Nixon gets off scot-free. Um, he never goes to jail. He never gets prosecuted for any of these things. He just gets to live his life. Okay, that is your short summary of Watergate. Um, it's way more involved and in depth than that. Um, there's a pretty good podcast about it called Slow Burn that covers like, um, it's several episodes and it covers like all the different little details of Watergate. So I do strongly recommend that if you're more interested in learning about this. Uh, as always, you can ask me questions uh, here or by email or on Teams. And I hope you guys are having a good week. Bye.